Our Carrera slot car track doesn't have much in the way of scenery, so we're going to add a little bit and we're going to start by building a pit garage. Now this pit garage that I'm going to add is not something I'm going to buy, but rather print with my 3D printer. And what I'm doing here is going to a Thingiverse. Uh, for those not familiar with 3D printing, this is just one of many sites where people can upload their designs for other people to be able to use them and print on their own. And what I'm searching for here is a 30 second scale pit garage. And there's several here that will work. And I'll show you uh, what I'm going to call the original first is this one here. And uh, this is really uh, just a, like a, basically at the front of the pit garage, like a facade. Uh, it's really intended to go like on the back of your of your layout, like against the wall. Uh, now this won't work for me because I don't really have a back of the layout or a wall for that matter. So I'm going to use this other one, which is a remix, and that is basically just a, an original design that somebody has uh, changed in some way. And the way that this one was changed was. Uh, instead of being just a facade now with the front of the building it's a full depth building and therefore uh, it's going to look correct when i put it in the middle of my layout here are the files included in the download and <laughs> there's quite a few of them actually now this building is modular you could build this two bays long three bays long you could make it 10 bays long if you wanted to and so some of these pieces are ends you know left and right and then others are only middle pieces uh, some of them are the same no matter where they are in the building and so uh, some of these files you're actually going to print multiples of the parts and depending on how many bays you want your garage to be the first piece i'm going to try to print for this is a roof panel and i originally brought it into the profile for my smaller printer it's a 220 by 220 millimeter print bed and it's too big it won't even fit uh, so i got to put it on my larger one and it takes up darn near the whole print bed and so this building is going to be that's going to be pretty decent size Here's that roof panel printing in silver PLA on my Ender 3 Max Neo. And now I really love my Ender printers. They got really good print quality and they're a very reasonable price too. Uh, but they're not what you'd call a, uh, a high speed printer. And so this right here is probably an hour, hour and a half in and probably have another six hours to go. And the roof panel is done, and here it is. It looks pretty good. Now, this is bigger. This is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Now, I mean, I do understand this is a 30-second scale building, um, but keep in mind there's three more of these that have to be printed also uh, and put together. And so, uh, yeah, this is going to be a good, decent size. I'm printing up one of the intermediate wall sections here, and then on the other printer, one of the floor sections. This goes... Uh, just in front of the uh, the bay door and now i could run multiple parts at a time here uh, but i'm just doing kind of like one set for one bay and then i'll put that together kind of see how it looks make sure that i like the color combinations and all the parts fit correctly and then when i'm satisfied there uh, then i'll go ahead and run like multiple parts per run i was going to print one of the doors the bay doors next and then realize that it's pretty plain and it could use a little embellishment i guess and so I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, 3D uh, rendering of my YouTube channel logo and add it to the front of each of these doors. Uh, and then um, I'll also set that up as a three, um, actually be a four color uh, print, the gray for the door and then the red, white, and black for my logo. It definitely adds uh, time and complexity to the print, but it'll totally be worth it. Because I don't have a multicolor printer, I need to add pauses in the print code. And this is where it'll just stop at a certain layer so that I can uh, change the filament with a different color and I just go ahead and resume the print until it gets to the next layer where it needs a color change and so forth. This is partially through one of the door prints here. It's probably got three more layers to go before it'll pause for the next color. The process for printing this door is pretty much the same as I did for the rotating sign for the slot car track. I don't know if you saw that or not. I did a video on that a while back now i don't know if this is intended to look like a roll-up door and if so then this badge on here doesn't really make a lot of sense because it wouldn't be able to roll up right it's not really segmented or anything so we're just going to pretend that uh, this door is kind of pivots up like this okay per the calculations of the slicer program the total time for all the parts to print 
is about 140 hours, uh, which is a lot, uh, and also should use about one and a half kilos of filament. Uh, that's about one and a half spools at $20 a spool. That's a material cost of $30. So there's a significant cost there, you know, plus a lot of time. All the parts are printed now for the four bay pit garage and uh, there's a lot of parts here and i'm not going to go through and talk about every single one of them here i'll just throw a list of well everything you see here normally when i put together 3d printed parts i'll use ca or cyanoacrylate or otherwise known as super glue and that, that creates a pretty good uh, chemical weld basically uh, however, I'm not really sure about the configuration of this garage, uh, how it's going to fit on my layout, and therefore I might end up needing to take a bay off, or maybe I'd want to add a bay or two, and therefore I don't want to make it permanent yet. And so, therefore, I'm going to use uh, hot glue instead. And the uh, thing about the hot glue is it's pretty easy to just go ahead and cut through with a hobby knife if I want to take some part of this apart. And then uh, when I do have a configuration that I know I'm going to keep, I'll go ahead and make it permanent uh, with some CA. Or who knows, I might not even like this at all. It might not really work on my layout, and therefore I can take the whole thing apart, and maybe I'll just give it away in an upcoming video or something. So stay tuned. Now, this didn't come with any instructions. Uh, however, it's pretty obvious where all the parts go. Remember, I was saying that this was a remix where uh, the original design was just the front part, the facade, and then it was appended with you know, the rest of the garage uh, to make it a you know, full depth. And you can definitely tell the difference between the two designers. You know, the original one up front, everything is much more rigid. It goes together with you know, tabs and slots. And then everything here back was the second designer. And... And the walls are pretty thin and flimsy and there's really no way to connect them to each other except for just a butt joint and so if we were just to connect these wall sections and put it across the back it's going to be pretty flimsy so i printed up these runners that are going to go horizontally across the wall sections after i put them together just to make them more rigid and then i also did some gussets that will go vertically on the ends and then that way there's something to hold on to the side walls when i put the back wall on you know, the original facade type garage definitely had a more robust design and it's too bad that all the stuff added in the remix uh, wasn't designed the same way. For the graphics I designed everything to fit all on one sheet and then print it onto these full page shipping labels and then cut those out as needed and stick them on the parts. I got my decal stuck to my parts now, and uh, these are the rooftop billboards. Of course, that's our brand that's going to go across there four times. And then for the front of the balconies, I got some different sponsors. Actually, can't call them sponsors because they're not paying me for them. And so a little while back, I had done a video on a track update where I noted that the uh, guardrails, our custom-made guardrails, were getting a little beat up, and we needed to print up a new set. And so I asked uh, any of the slot car channels on YouTube if they wanted they could send me their uh, channel logo and I put up those on my next set of, of guardrails and so I got three of them that were sent to me there's uh, Massimo from MP slot car and uh, Dave from slaughter and uh, Marty from two lines although his channel is actually called Marty Ford not two lines and while I haven't made up a new set of guardrails yet I figured I can use those channel logos on the balconies of my new pick garage all together now and doesn't look too bad now these bay doors weren't designed to open or close and so i suppose you could just not put one or two or all of them in to make the bays open but then there's really nothing on the inside like not even a floor now these window openings on the side and also on the back really could use some glass i'm pretty sure i got some clear plastic i can put in behind there to make it look correct over at the track now to figure out where I'm going to put this. Now normally you'd take a, a pit garage, I guess, and you'd put it you know, alongside the pits. Well, on our current layout, this is the pits right here on a turn, on the outside of this turn, so it's not really going to fit there. But you know, who says you have to have the garage in the pits, right? So I'm thinking I can go across the street along here. 
Now it looks pretty good sitting here actually, but it does bring up a concern however, and that's visibility. Uh, and I've always wondered about some of these other slot car tracks that I've seen that are highly scenic uh, and they look great. Uh, but when you got like lots of trees and like billboards and grandstands and there's entire sections of the track that you can't really see, I just wonder if that really creates an issue. And uh, uh, I guess I guess they manage, but I'm walking over here to the other side of the table where we would drive from and noticing that the building completely obstructs the exit of the pit, which not really a good idea. So moving this to somewhere else on the track would probably be best, and maybe over here in this area, uh, or maybe on the other end by the start finish line, provided there's enough room. And again, who says your garage has to be right on pit row? Well, what do you know? It does fit, but just barely. Uh, now this is right uh, at the start finish line and also right where the uh, tunnel entrance is, which is kind of neat. I'm just going to walk around to the other side where we drive from to see the visibility. And yeah, you're going to lose sight of your car for a split second, but you're on a straightaway, so this is not going to be a big deal. So yeah, this will totally work. Now the next time we change the track layout, whenever that's going to be, uh, it could very well be that the pit is on a long straightaway in front of the driver's station, in which case the building would then go there. But for now, it's probably going to stay right where it is. The design could use some work though, and, and most notably the part that was appended to the original design. And so if I were to remix the remix, I would uh, extend the interior walls all the way to the rear of the building and then that way the rear wall would have some support and it wouldn't be so flimsy and then I'd also figure out a way to uh, hinge the bay door so you could open those and put cars in. Uh, of course if you do that then you'd need a floor on the interior of the building as well which uh, designing it's not a problem just uh, printing up that much floor though probably gonna end up going through another half a spool of filament. When I started this project and I ran that very first roof panel and it took up almost the entire print bed I was just thinking, you know, this thing is going to be huge. It's going to look like ridiculously big on the layout. But uh, now that I have it here uh, on the track, it looks correct. Uh, it's the right scale and all that. So I think I'm going to keep it. I might try to weather it, though, so it doesn't look so plasticky. And I might even build another one with my aforementioned changes, like openable bay doors with an interior. Uh, if I do that, I'll release another video. And speaking of videos, if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if not already. We really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you at the finish line.